this. This right here is the view from my hotel room. Here it is. This is this is the kind of views that you get at the Holiday Inn in Colby, Kansas, if you stay in the odd-numbered rooms. This is a cornfield. This is up to the brink of my hotel is a cornfield. I just want you to know that You're I'm telling in me that the if most I stay... western Kansas town I've ever been in. You're telling me that if I stay in Colby, Kansas at the right time, I get to see a combine? Oh, oh yeah. You will see. The, honestly, the coolest part is if you stay in Colby, Kansas long enough, you'll get to see uh, storm chasers. No, barnstormers. Field stormers? Fucking, what's the plane that drops the... The crop dusters <laughs> crop dusters god damn i knew his already a word and i could i knew his already what like, been used in other like instances and i couldn't <laughs> remember what pop culture crop thing dusters. it already was all crop right dusters, all yes. right shut your ass up welcome into welcome dumbest everybody, everybody. let's get this true. shit started Welcome, everyone, into another episode of Dom. That's true. I'm your host with the most Owen Domination 7 Dom. Joining me is, as whoa, always, whoa, Truman, whoa, whoa, the Steen Machine whoa, Steen. Whoa. Slow down. What do you mean, slow, slow down? down? I'm not slowing What's down. What's your nickname? What's your nickname? Well, it's right now it's the host with the most, but I'm formerly known as Owen uh, the Bomb Dom. <laughs> Kaboom! Sorry. Also joining me. True in the steam machine, Steen. That's me. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, make the clink clink noise. Thank you. Clink, Thank you. Clink, 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 clink. And yeah. special guest today, my coworker and friend, Josh. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. The boss, Josh. Of course. Of course. There you go. Thanks for anyway, being here, folks, man. as you well know, we're doing our division previews here on the preseason editions of Dom That's True. Today, we're doing one of the most exciting divisions in football, I think. One of the divisions that always uh, predictively produces some really good rivalries and unexpected drama, the NFC East. And so we invited my friend Josh on, and he is an Eagles fan. So you know he's going to be bringing some spicy takes. And as you know, the rivalry, holy cow. Dude, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. We we had another episode of... uh, uh, Where do we hit the gwitty? We had another episode of Sud Buds. And uh, why is my alarm going off? Great. Uh, we had another episode of Sud Buds on the previous episode of Grub Buds. So as the uh, episode progresses here on Down That's True, my takes will get better and better. But we're doing NFC East. Josh is an Eagles fan. Go Birds. Go Birds, man. It's, it's crazy how just like a couple drinks will fuck up your language just enough. Like I've noticed that before. We're, you know, we're having like two drinks in an hour. Yeah, three total for me. When three we do total that, for me. Yeah. Yeah, two yeah, two or three, exactly. Yeah. And you'll like your like your speech will just become like you'll just fumble over words like nothing. Yeah, it's and really fun. Like, uh, it's really fun because yeah. then it contributes to the fact that uh some listeners of Dom that's true think I'm a fucking moron. So it, you know, that really helps me out. Thanks, Truman. Thanks only for your show planning. Listeners? Yeah, I know only all. some. I've got it down to only some instead of all. Hey, li- hey, listen! I didn't play the Sangri episode. You get, you got the people there that you can talk to. Oh, to complain oh, about you're the you're saying episode. you do practice sangria and you threw do have the crystal the ball. garlic pizza. I threw out the garlic crust pizza from Pizza Hut, so that was my. Idea. Well, you know we can't do Pizza Hut on Dom. That's true because it's the inferior or, pizza chain. Sorry, I, I meant it's actually Papa John's. The actual inferior pizza chain is the one I. Meant yeah. Okay. Say, okay. Sorry. Real quick, Josh. Before we get this episode started, are you a Pizza Hut or a Papa John's guy? Papa John's all day. That's right. But I you also, know, I'm biased. I used to work at a Papa John's. I also used oh to work at a Papa God. John's. <laughs> baby, let's go. Former Papa John's employees. No. <laughs> No, I, I nope, still got my shirt, no, it's man. Thrown I out. still got it. And I I've, still have my shirt, too. <laughs> I was thinking about wearing it. I just got to find a gr- the correct kiss, party kiss, to dress up. Kiss, 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 <laughs> Josh, you know what I still have? The fucking no. beanie. No, oh, really? No, it's fire. Oh, oh it's hot. Nice. I, I, I really wanted to keep one of those little bags to put the pizza the, in. Yeah, the hot bags? They, they wouldn't let me take one. Or like the, they actually put the, what should we call trackers on all those things on top of the car. Yeah. Because you know? that would be cool to have, but... <laughs> I guess you can't have that. Yeah, see, Truman, you're outnumbered here, bitch. You're ass out I of think here. both of but by per rule, I think both of you would have to recuse recuse yourself from the what's my excuse? Recuse yourself from the vote. Uh so mm-hmm. then Pizza Hut wins. Well uh-huh. uh, Pizza Hut was good when they did the buffets. But ever since they stopped the buffets, it's been garbage. Mm. Oh brother. 
Oh, bro. Oh, man. Uh, you can almost see it from here. They still have those in basically every small town. Basically still does the pizza. The, the buffet? Well, it's probably the only Italian yes. restaurant in the town. <laughs> so, you know, it's not even surprising. Mc, McPherson, Kansas had one, and they had an actual Italian restaurant. Uh, neither were very good. Mm, I, can't, I can't imagine it would be. Small town Italian in the Midwest, just it, that doesn't scream good to me. You just, know? just the the most bland, like... I was like, man, if you guys could just crack some pepper on this dish, it would be awesome. Crack but they also pepper. like didn't put pepper or salt on the table. I'm like, listen, Did you I can't think? make bland food and also not provide. You can't be say, oh, we're so fancy. We don't put the spices on the table. Fucking bring me some salt and pepper, man. Absolutely. You need the oregano, too. You tell me there wasn't oregano on ooh, the table. Ooh. No. Oh, hey, now God. you're speaking his language, Josh. Truman is known for his oregano usage, actually. I actually love oregano. Oregano and cilantro. They're my two favorites. I'll t I See, love you're them. scoring major brownie points here. Another way to score <laughs> nice. major, major brownie points oh, yeah, is to okay. score Dallas's season correctly. I know. So Dallas is one of those teams, Josh, as you know. Obviously, your arch rival. Yeah. Hate, Hate them most of all. Hate both, both two passionate and old franchises. Both been around for a, a very long time. Both have good reason to hate each other because you continually knock each other out of uh, the playoffs. Yeah. But as you well know, that I mean, you can't deny that your two teams have essentially been the cream of the crop, probably, in the NFC East for f essentially for some time now. You know, Dallas I think has been more consistent than the Eagles, but the Eagles have obviously gone farther than Dallas when the Philadelphia does make a run. I all I have to say about that is the last time Dallas won a Super Bowl was nineties, and nice. so every Dallas Dude, Cowboy. I don't think fan, anybody here was alive, right? Yeah, no, no, I I wasn't alive. No, I mean Jalen Hurts. We weren't made alive. it to a Super Bowl, and but then I don't know half the time, and the Dallas hasn't even gone to a Super Bowl. So yeah, Dallas is they're a horrible franchise. I wish them the worst. <laughs> um, I hope they go on seventeen this year. I. <laughs> I don't think they will. They got some good players like Micah Parsons, but I hope you go in 17. Josh, uh, I'll, I told Truman this last week uh, when we were talking to our, our friend from the NFC West, but uh, one fact that you always have to bring up to Dallas fans is that you have to tell them that they've won three playoff games since 2000, which makes them correct you into saying that actually they've only won two. <sighs> actually, it's two. And then we got all crazy plays. Like, did you see that play last year? Everyone saw it. Ezekiel Elliott. Snapping the ball, <laughs> just just by himself. That was the dumbest. It was play like the call. Pat McAfee play from the Colts. It was just it, it was absurd. I saw it. And I I I was blown away. I, I, what kind of coaching does that? Mike McCarthy. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, moving oh, on. Speak real quick, sorry. The the Royals just lost on a walk off grand slam against the Red Sox. So. Oh wait, like a like that by one. Great. No, they lost by four. It was oh. tied game, but the oh, guy whatever. hit a grand slam. Hey, you so, know, the, the Royals are turning back into a pumpkin. You don't win six in a row without any consequences. <laughs> the Philly Se should have. Seven, uh, I thought. I thought it was seven. Philly should have swept the Royals. I was surprised we didn't. I think you guys got us the first night Friday, and I was blown yeah. away. Yeah. yeah, we did. We did. We just threw it away. Bryce Probably. Harper made me some money. Uh, I appreciate him getting a hit. That was, yeah. that was nice of him. Yeah, Bryce is pretty good. So we're no longer talking about the hottest team in any sport. We're actually just talking about the Dallas Cowboys now. So Josh, the way this works is a Truman and I are picking all 273 games this season. So some of these games have already been filled out because we've already gone over those divisions. Obviously you will be picking each one. And generally we just go through the division in alphabetical order. So we're going to start with, uh, with Dallas and week one, Dallas visits the giants for uh, what I think should be a pretty easy Dallas win. That's fair. No, I, I agree with you there. I think Dallas will go ahead and take the W there um, at MetLife Stadium. They'll go ahead and just give it to them right off the bat. I mean, the Giants are just a horribly run team. Hey, dude, they have Danny, Daniel Dimeson, dude. That's $40 million a yeah. year. Yeah, no, I think it's 53 I... It's 53 for Daniel Jones. No, That's right. It's, fit, no, it's no, like, no, it's like it's, no. I thought it was 50 plus for like the full. first year. No, it's forty-five a year for da average value is forty or forty-five because Justin Herbert just got like fifty-three, I think, and that was a big deal. Oh, uh, that yeah, no, that's right. Still, still getting, absurd. Giving Daniel Jones anywhere over yeah. twenty million oh, a year yeah. is insane. 
anything over $40 purchase. million dollars is insane. He's going to make more than Chris Jones and Aaron Donald, which is just not right. Uh, 40 years, 160. So 40 million. Oh but my still. God. Jesus. <laughs> that, that. that's, I don't, For, don't know how they're going to pay that. Hey, fastest player in the league. Put some respect. Put some respect. I, every single time I think about Daniel Jones, I think about that time he had an 80-yard run, and that man got tackled by the air. Oh, hey. And he just d- fell straight. Just, just so you know, that run is the fastest anyone ran the whole year. Really? Yep. He reached the top speed yep. of any player in the entire league, faster than Tyreek Hill. Can we really say he reached the top speed if he tumbled on his own? Well, technically, yeah. He still he still got there, but I mean, he, didn't, he didn't get there. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's like saying you win the NASCAR race, but you crash at the end before you get there. So, I don't know. Hey, Lightning McQueen pushed the pushed the king across the finish line. So, he would have won. He was the fastest car on the track that day, but he didn't win. <laughs> so, I just want to throw that out there. Sherman, you know. speaking of that day, uh, what are you uh, – Who's, who's winning this game? Who's winning week one? I'm actually going to pick the Giants here. I think the Giants and the Cowboys split. I think I think they're having a mid-off, and I would, <laughs> I'll would i take them to split. Uh, for this next game, Owen, we have already picked this, but a reminder to people if they want to go back and check out our picks. Hey, open Disaster Productions on YouTube.com. Uh, maybe a subscribe. Maybe a little like. You can comment if you hate our picks. Smack that, stuff, that bell. But... Smack the bell. Yeah, yeah, smack it. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. But that's all I just, I just want to add that. Yeah, Josh, for the next four games, we've actually already picked the outcome. So uh, week two, the Dallas hosts the Jets. Truman picks this as a Jets win. I picked this as a Dallas win. What say you? So this one's tough. You got Aaron Rodgers with the new offensive rookie of the year and a defensive rookie of the year. Like the Jets, are, I think, could be a playoff team this year. Mm-hmm. And I think that they're going to be – is it in MetLife Stadium twice? No, that one's at home at Dallas. No, this is, this is in uh, so, at t I don't know. That is a tough one. Aaron Rodgers, I think, will start off hot, and then he usually gets like shittier as the season goes. Mm-hmm. So I actually will put the Jets winning this one. Okay, okay. I don't think it's ridiculous to say that. So uh, in week three, Dallas visits a probably the worst team in the league in the Arizona Cardinals. Truman and I have both chosen this as a Dallas win. You know what are you talking about? That Kyler Murray, man, he's <laughs> crazy good. He's going to be watching a bunch of film, huh? Yeah, he's watching all that film. I can't wait till Call of Duty comes out again. What, <laughs> Warzone 3.0. That oh, man, we won't even see him. So, yeah, that, that's that's a loss for sure by Arizona. Yeah. So, yeah. Dallas is winning that. <laughs> so, week four, uh, Dallas comes back home uh, to AT&T to host New England. Truman and I have already chosen this as a Dallas win. Yeah. I, I agree with you there because, like, New England, while – I like their defense, and they've had a top 10 defense, I think, for the last 10 years. Yeah, seems like it. They just they can't seem to get anything going on offense. And I don't think Juju is the move mm. going there. And you know what? We'll get to Juju whenever it's the Eagles, but I hate you, Juju. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you would hate him. He only went off for like 25 yards against you guys in the Super Bowl. No, it's not what he did in the Super Bowl. It's what uh, he did after. Ah, okay. That okay. man. Okay, I see. I he's, see. On the, oh, he's on the wrong side. He's tweeting about that. Yeah, I oh, see he's it. tweeting about the you can't come at AJ Brown like that or <laughs> or Bradbury. Come on, have some respect. Oh, you come at Bradbury like that. No, Bradbury was nothing but kind after that loss. <laughs> anyway, week five, Dallas goes on the road to San Francisco. I've chosen this actually as another Dallas win because, and my reasoning, San Francisco isn't going seventeen to zero. They need to lose some games. And so for this one, I chose a Dallas win. Truman, probably smart, uh, a smarter pick than me, chose uh, San Francisco to win this one. I don't understand how you could look at that team and say Dallas is going to win. It just, to me, it the doesn't. NFL doesn't make sense sometimes, Josh. It No, that he's never beat Kyle Shanahan. Mike McCarthy's like, what, 0-5 against them? They get really? booted from the playoffs every year Oof. against them. So if they win... Uh, Dallas might as go ahead and consider that a Super Bowl win. All right. They're not winning that. All right. So, yeah, I'm assuming you're choosing uh, San Francisco to win that one. Yeah. No. All right. And now the first matchup that none of us have picked yet. It is uh, Dallas goes on the road week six to the Chargers. Oh, both of these teams have literally the same DNA. Is get hyped up by the media and then lose when it matters. Ah. Uh. Truman, I, I don't know. I'm going to let you go first on this one. I'm going to take Chargers because okay. it's in L.A. 
you know, the Chargers don't have home field advantage really in LA, but yeah, I they still don't really think, have any fans. Yeah, but I still think they're probably better than Dallas. You know, I have to agree with this you. One. Uh, Josh, one thing you'll find out as we go through the show is that we really enjoy narrative based choices. Hmm. So uh, I'm going to narratively base choice of the Chargers to win this one because this is when USA Today writes another article saying how the Chargers are going to win the Super Bowl because they just oh. beat the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Bro, yeah. they already picked them to win the division. I, oh, my God. They picked I can the sense that there's no biases seven. here at all. I can tell that you're just an unbiased oh, no, looking at no, this. Oh, no. We're very biased, and that's fine. <laughs> uh, we, we, we have no problem with bias here. Mm. Well, I think the Chargers actually win this one. You got Justin Herbert against Dak Prescott. Um, hey, you know, Dak Prescott is statistically – the same as Tom Brady through eight seasons. Yeah, but that's three seasons. I don't like those. Those that's, <laughs> it, that means nothing to me. It's about gameplay. It's about turnovers. Like Dak doesn't take care of the football, and that's what's going to lose them that game. Yeah, uh, there's no shot. Justin Herbert is just a much better quarterback, and he's better looking. Like, look at that man's curls. <laughs> How can you not root for him? I I didn't say I'm not rooting for him. <laughs> I want him to lose every game, but. I don't like want him to fail. You know what I'm saying? Like right. he's a Charger. I have to. I have to hope he loses every game. Yeah, but like I feel like the Chargers are not too much of a rival to you guys. Uh, I mean, not really. But think about it this way, right? Uh, like, nobody's you, a you rival hate, to us. You right hate right now. You you hate the Cowboys For now. You well, nobody the, in the AFC West is a rival. Sorry. Right. I mean, like you hate you hate the Cowboys, mm-hmm. but like Micah Parsons seems like a fun guy to root for. Yeah, no, I, and I'll root for Micah Parsons, but like. But you want him to lose every game. I want him to lose every yeah, game. Yeah, see? see, exactly. So, I I like Justin Herbert. He's like he's a nice, humble guy. He's a good player. But I want him to go 0 and 17. Yeah, but he's just I don't know. I think he actually beats KC once this year. Probably. We'll I mean, they're the Chargers. They got to beat him early and then you know fall off and not make the playoffs. Yeah, or you know lose by 30 points after leading. How, how much did they lead by? 28. It was uh, 28 points. Yeah. The, I remember I actually bet playoff collapse. I actually bet Jags plus three and a half that game. I woke up and I was very happy <laughs> with my bet. <laughs> like that you were like that one guy that fell asleep on the couch and his yeah. friends woke him up like <laughs> Oh, I was ecstatic. I stopped watching the game. I just went home, chilled, maybe took a little nap, and then woke up and I was just like, Oh my god, they won. And I also called the New York Giants beating the Vikings. Dude, that was a good day. I made like a hundred bucks. Yeah. I don't know where it went. <laughs> no, I didn't what, get in my what, savings. What, what happened? <laughs> All right. Um, Drugs and alcohol to help you forget <laughs> yeah, yeah. how you made it. <laughs> All right. Week eight, uh, uh, after the bye week, uh, Dallas is hosting the Rams. Truman and I already gave this one to the Cowboys. We don't think the Rams are going to make that big of a comeback this year. Did the Rams – the Rams don't have uh, Von Miller. He's on the Bills this year again, yeah, right? Is. So, yeah, I, I, especially with the bye week, I, I find it very hard for Dallas to come back from that. They're – or I'm sorry, the Rams. You're choosing Dallas here? Yeah. I have to choose Dallas sure, here. Sure, sure, sure. That's fine. So, uh, November 5th at Loss. Philadelphia. Loss. <laughs> Loss. Absolutely. You can't come into our house and win. You're not going to do that. You know, I, I actually, before actually really getting into it, I also think Philadelphia is just going to easily clean up this one. I think, you know. You have Philly undefeated at home? Uh, Probably, honestly. Yeah. Well, I, think we, I mean, Josh. Do I think they will this season? Yeah. Uh, no, because we play the 49ers at home and the Bills at home. And I don't think – I don't know. I think we lose to the Bills this year. Josh Allen, I think, is a horrible quarterback, but I think the Bills win. Sure. But, but what about this game? Dallas at uh, Oh, you already chose. I, I absolutely. I'm going. We're going to beat him by 20. I'll take Philly. I'll take Philly here. Yeah. I don't think that's crazy. I think, you know – Phillies, everyone knows, is one of the most hostile places to go in all of sports in general. And especially in a rivalry game, you got to think the beer is going to be flowing through those Philly hearts. Um, so then Dallas uh, follows that up with a road trip to the Giants. Give me a loss here. Nope. Nope. Home. Home against the Giants. Oh, they go uh, back home to the Giants. They still yes. lose in a shocker. This is uh, yeah. You, you have them reverse splitting it. You have them winning on the road and losing at home. This is the Dallas Cowboys treatment. It's a team that never makes sense. Fair enough. I'm going to take Dallas here. I have them splitting, and I think they'll win their home game. I think that New York is going to be a much better team this year. Mm -hmm. They did draft well. 
especially because they uh, got Darren Waller. So that's a big tight end that, you know. I forgot they got Darren Waller. Yeah, that's a huge uh, – like if you look at the career or the regular season stats of their tight ends last year, he didn't even have over 280 yards. Yeah, Darren Waller is going to anybody. double that, if not triple those numbers, uh, because Daniel Jones – He's not going to stay in the pocket. He needs those quick passes. Tight end. I see the, I see Giants winning this one. All right. All right. Then, uh, so was that week 10? They go on the road. Uh, sorry, week 11. They go on the road to Carolina. I don't think Carolina has the firepower to beat a team that's at least decently established like uh, Dallas is. I'm going to take the Cowboys here. That's fair. I'm... I'm also going to take the Cowboys here. I, I just don't think Carolina's good now. They got Bryce Young now, right? Yep. So I would I would be blown away because I don't know what Carolina has other than the new their new quarterback. I don't think they have – I don't even know their first wide receiver. Their wide receiver one. Who uh, is – does, does anyone even know what their wide receiver one is? I know they got Miles Sanders. Carolina? Right? Uh, Adam Thielen is there. Oh, fuck, I forgot about Thielen. Thielen It's only because I've been doing mock drafts over the past couple days that I was like, what? Oh, that's right. I don't know. I feel like Thielen's like a – I mean, Thielen's a solid wide receiver too, but he's not wide receiver one level for me. So He's really the Kirk Cousins of wide receivers. He is, yeah. I I agree with that. Real Uh, gym rat, real kind of heady guy, real bring his lunch uh, pail, first in, first out. (laughs) Coach's son. Uh, plays, the, plays the game the right way. Sneaky athletic. Strong fundamentals. Yeah, I, th- I think Dallas wins that one. Yeah. I mean, Adam Thielen also used to be the Kirk Cousins of of uh, wide receiving. Underrated uh, underrated first choice. But now he's just Did the I Kirk. Not say? But now he's just the oh. Kirk Cousins of wide receiving. Oh. Oh. The, uh, correctly a- rated as. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the, the yeah. aging correctly rated second choice. Fair enough. Then uh, right. Dallas hosts Washington. Uh, I think this is a trap game. I really, I think both games against Washington for Dallas are a trap game because they have a quarterback with no expectations versus Dak, a quarterback with all of the expectations. And uh, Washington's defense is, has always been sneaky good. Washington decent defense have carried them to all the wins they had in the last two years. Uh, Chase Young coming off of injury back into the fold. Uh, I, I still think Dallas wins it, but I'm interested to pick the next one. Dallas has like double digit wins every year, and it's always without having winning any marquee games. So I'm going to take Dallas over the commanders here because I think they'll have to sweep them to get where I think they'll end up. Sure. I think Sam Howell is not it. Uh, Dallas will probably beat him by at least 10. Yeah, I mean, looking back on that game, I mean, the last time we saw a North Carolina quarterback do well was, I don't remember, because the last one was Mitch Trubisky. And he wasn't even that good. No, he was trash. I, you said Carolina? I thought he was Bears. No, he's Bears. a North Carolina product. Oh, got you. Oh, yeah. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> I was like, what? I was yeah, also no. right there with you. I was like, huh? No, North um, Carolina pro. I didn't even know that he went to North Carolina. That's just. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's well, that's how you know that probably not that good mm. of a quarterback. Um, mm. Then Dallas. Wait, uh, wait. Can you remember where Daniel Jones went? Fuck no. I have no idea where I Daniel can. Jones went. It's it's a weird one. Is it like, Is it Eastern, like Mississippi State? Eastern Carolina? No, it's Duke. Oh, oh it is Duke. Yeah, right. you're right. I did see that. But Duke yeah. is not a good football program. Does Duke either. play football? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I never even really hear about Duke playing football. They so. they make a bowl game like once every ten years, and everyone's like, "Hey, don't sleep on Duke." Oh, it's kind of like K State. All right, all <laughs> right. Ooh. What? What? That's not even half correct, Josh. We made That's a bowl a game like shot. four straight years. I've never heard of K-State before I moved here. And then everyone <laughs> is just in love with K-State. I didn't even know you guys were in school. Uh, Truman, f- let the record show that this man went to a D3 college. Uh, actually, I don't even think we were. I would think we were like E3. We weren't even in the Ds, man. It, see. Like, we didn't even have a football team. See, let the record show that this man's college did not what have is, a football team. 
what? Yeah, you see, exactly. Yeah. Don't listen yeah. to whatever crap he tosses on. Hey, uh, man. Did your if target I, shot I, on K-State? I, if I could have gone somewhere, it would have been Virginia Tech, but they didn't accept me because I'm an idiot. What was the name What was the name of your D3 school? It's, uh, it's called Lynchburg College. <laughs> yeah, never heard of them. <laughs> never heard of them. <laughs> Well, it's well, a great place. Yeah. You should uh, you should give it a visit sometime. Good old Lynchburg, Virginia. <laughs> you can't go wrong. It's uh, it's actually I've in a Bible of the Belt. Much more famous Lynchburg, Tennessee, but not yeah. Lynchburg, Virginia. There's a uh, actually, if you know Liberty University, they're also based out of uh, Lynchburg. Oh, actually, we do know Good. Liberty. And I, ball yes. yeah, well, I hate Liberty. Yeah. They suck. <laughs> I so, hate them. <laughs> they're the worst. <laughs> All right. Anyway, speaking of liberty, Seattle, Washington, the the city of liberty, is uh where uh who's coming to town versus Dallas? She's coming to town. Yeah, it's a, it's a random aside. Don't worry about it. Uh, Truman and I have already chosen this as a Dallas win. I actually believe in Pete Carroll and Geno Smith, so I'm going to take that as a weird loss where they just have right. a fluke game. All right, that's not that's not ridiculous. They uh, have we an could, oddly weak schedule this year. So well, but, but the we game had after a friend that, on the show who was picking Gino to win MVP. So we did. I mean, wasn't he like third or fourth runner last season? Because he threw for like four and a half thousand yards. Or I don't think he registered. I think the people only. Well, here, he had let a me couple look. votes early I mean, he on. Did, he, I don't think he got any votes because I I mean, Jalen Hurts only got one vote, which was absurd to well, me, which he shouldn't have. Yeah, it's absurd that he got a vote. <laughs> oh my God! Shut <laughs> up, man. That that man deserved See, just that man one had more... guy. One guy had to keep Patrick Mahomes from being unanimous MVP. Josh, he threw for like twelve hundred yards. Jalen Hurts? Yeah. No, he threw for like thirty seven hundred yards, Whoa. and then rushed for another seven hundred or eight hundred yards. Damn, that's crazy. He's only th- uh, seven hundred yards behind Patrick Mahomes in total offense. Geno that's... Smith finished fourteenth. 14th in MVP voting. 14. Right behind Tyree Hill and Eagle- just in front of Tua Tangalaivoa. Tua got more votes in? That man was out half the season with they were concussions. All, uh, yeah, looking back on it, they were all tied. A.J. Uh, Brown, Justin Fields, Derrick Henry, Justin Herbert, Tyree Kill, Geno Smith, Tua, all tied. A.J. Brown and Tyreek tied? It's a travesty. Anyway, moving they on. They all probably got like one third place vote. Moving on to December 10th. Uh, Philly comes to town in Dallas. Uh, this is an easy Philly win. Philly's not losing to Dallas this year. Uh, give me a Dallas win. Simple. Easy. Division games. Give me a split. They have to get the double-digit wins because Dallas always does it, and they'll make you the know, playoffs, and then they disappoint. So they the have weirdest, to beat the Eagles here. The weirdest thing is Jalen Hurts has not played Dak Prescott yet. Yeah, it's true. He hasn't. They both have either been injured when they played yeah, against each other. Yeah, because the one was Cole Rush, and the yeah. other one was... We beat Rush last year, or Cooper Rush. Yeah, and then Gardner Minshew played the same game. And then game. Gardner had a hell of a game. He did. Um, Almost won it, Uh, but he's just not there. As a, you can't depend on that. I mean, he's not clutch. He's just... No, he's not quite there yet. You kind of have to coach him up. And, I mean, that showed with the Saints game Running afterwards. Backs. He was right. garbage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Running backs. Obviously... Philly's going to win that one because Dallas is going 0-17 this year. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> then yeah, uh, yeah. the next game, Dallas goes on the road to Buffalo. Truman and I have already chosen this as a loss. I don't know. Buffalo, I think that Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs are at, like, the worst point in their relationship. So I could actually see uh, Cowboys winning that one. All right, all right. Ooh, then, could be uh, turmoil. Turmoil, trouble in Buffalo. Even trouble even Buffalo. though there's going to be probably two feet of of snow for that game. <laughs> yeah, probably. Then then Dallas goes on the road December to Miami 17th. on uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, Truman and I have already chosen this as a Dallas loss, actually. Yeah, against Miami. I mean, you just have so many weapons on Miami, so I think I think Dallas loses that one too. All right. There's also there's got to be a stat for this. There's got to be an all-time record of difference in temperatures of games played back-to-back. I'm sure either Miami or Buffalo holds it just because of division games back-to-back or something, or somebody in the AFC East. But having to go to at Buffalo than at Miami should be a federal crime. That's <laughs> It's going to be five degrees with two feet of snow, and then you have to go play in 95-degree Miami the week after. Is Miami 90 degrees in December? Sometimes. 
Probably. Miami's Probably like 85, not. like all throughout December. No, you got like it. I've, I've been to it Florida, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been there in December. I Miami, like it, would it, be does not, it does not snow in Miami. Well, I would hope not. Well, I, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah we global warming that. might change it up a little bit. We'll see how that goes. Global yeah, warming is going to make it snow. Global warming today. Well, it, it is it 87 degrees <laughs> right now at, at, at 10, 15 p.m. in Miami. Damn. Which is kind of crazy. Well, that, is, that sounds oh, no, horrible. That? Yeah, the New Year's uh, Eve, Eve game. Uh, Dallas hosts Detroit. Truman and I have already chosen this as a Dallas win. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think Detroit's gonna be a good team this year, but Dallas is. They're they're gonna win that one. Dallas still better. Yeah. Okay. Then, December th- December thirtieth in Miami. The average is seventy five degrees, but the record high is eighty three. So. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean that's that, it's actually probably going to be more. I think they'll be fine. They're definitely going to struggle in Buffalo, but like going to Miami, they're in, you know, Dallas, Texas. That place is hot as hell too. So, sure. I think sure. they'll be fair with it. So then, the final week of the year, uh, Dallas goes on the road to Washington. Narratively based, I'm going to have to give this to Dallas so they can get to their uh, double digit win. That's not the number ten. Yeah, I think they'll get. I, I think they'll take this dub and make the playoffs just so they can go and disappoint again. Sam Howell's not it. Yeah, get a loss on that yeah. board for them. All right. So to, to sum it up, I have chosen Dallas for 11 wins this season. Truman has chosen them for 10, and Josh has chosen them for 9. So as a committee, we have the Dallas Cowboys going 9-8. and eight. Interesting. Nine and eight, Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Seems likely that they might miss the playoffs because of that. All right. Now picking the New York Giants, a team that has somehow been on like every fucking schedule <laughs> that we that we've already reviewed. So this is gonna go pretty quick. We've already chosen the week one. Then going to week two at Arizona. Truman has already chosen the New York Giants for a loss, and I have chosen them for a win against the Cardinals. Oh, real quick, a peek behind the curtain as to why all this has been filled out so much. The NFC East this year plays the the NFC West, which we picked two weeks ago, and then the AFC East, which we picked the week before that. So we we've picked eight games on basically every team's schedule. Yeah, that's fair. That I, mean, I will say Pretty. I'm excited to play all of the AFC East. That's gonna be fun. Because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. that's the that's probably the best uh division. In the AFC, and then you got the NFC East, which is the best oh, yeah. division in the NFC. So, uh-huh. what are we? Did the well, NFC actually, West? All the NFC play? West, I don't know. Just if the, the Cardinals West. weren't there dragging them down. Yeah, I could see. I mean, the Cardinals. I, I will say the Giants are going to win that one for sure. I don't know that the Cardinals are even going to win that many games. I saw their practice the other week. And Jonathan uh, yeah. Gannon as a head coach, yeah, I just don't think he's going to do that good. And also, I do not remember fuck, how I picked. Oh, fuck you, Jonathan Gannon, for going ahead and tampering with the Cardinals <laughs> during the Super Bowl. May I add, it's probably why you let up so many fucking points, dickhead. Anyways, uh, San Francisco, that's a loss for the Giants. I- I think I picked Arizona because I didn't want them to start 0-7, and, and this was the easiest game in those first seven games. So, <laughs> in my defense, I think that's why I picked Arizona. To, they to don't have any game. wide receivers, bro. Who's their tight? Do they even have a tight end? Zach Ertz. And Hollywood oh. Brown's their wide, their wide receiver one. Zach Ertz? You know Zach Ertz. Yeah, what do I you know, mean? I, know, I love Zach Ertz, actually. I just, I <laughs> really have to block out the fact that he left Philly, man, because that, that was heartbreaking, because him and Julie were so happy over there in Philly, and I, I mean, I love the guy. And now they're both sad, because one of them lost the World Cup, and one of them's in Arizona. Yeah, no, that Dude, World lost Cup lost. the World lost. Cup by, like, millimeters. That was crazy. That was an absurd Or if Megan Rapino just puts her shot on target. Oh, she, awesome. dude, she was so uh, pissed off about that when she did her interview, and she's like, "I can't believe my last game is me missing a like a PK oh, yeah, maybe like put that. a PK on target. It's really not that hard. Yeah, um, you're 18 feet away. <laughs> yeah, I've been saying it. Yeah, you know, it's easy yeah. to play World Cup soccer. Just yeah. fucking it's shoot so, it on so target. To just At play least soccer, if it gets yeah. saved, it gets saved. Yeah, I don't it's think simple. It's, uh, I, yeah. it's simple. Personally, I would have kicked the ball in the net. 
I just, Truman, just I honestly, I dead ass, I think you could go up right now and have a better PK attempt. I'm very serious. Yeah, I mean, if I knew that the other shot was uh, a miss, yeah. Yeah, you have to put it if on I target. Knew, I just had to put it on net. That yeah, makes it better. Yeah, technically. Yeah, it's really not that hard. Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, but but I, I think we're <laughs> I think we're oversimplifying a little bit. Anyway, just let me roast Megan Rapino, okay? She said it was an easy win for the U.S., and then they lost a little. Um, anyway, moving on to the New York Giants game three at San Francisco. I think this is a pretty easy loss, obviously. Yeah. That's definitely yes. going to be an L. Yes. Then the New York Giants host Seattle. Truman and I have already chose this as a win for the Giants. You guys just hate Seattle this year? I think it's been. Oh, uh, we have Seattle for a uh... fair few wins. I think we have them at 11 wins. I really? say I want to check. We picked we we both picked Seattle at oh I picked them at nine wins. Owen picked them at eight. We are a little low on Seattle. I guess we are mm, a little low. Yeah, you, you gotta put I just, more respect. I, I'm on. not quite a Geno believer. I mean, I'm not writing him back. off because I know he won't write back. But <laughs> I'm just not quite the Geno believer. I, I think he just turns back into a pumpkin, Josh. I said I right, think exactly. that the most important thing is Pete Carroll in that offense because if you look at Russell Wilson. He needed that coach to be as good as he yeah. was, and without him, if we've learned anything, yeah, yeah, we saw we saw him without him, and then, so I mean, I think Pete Carroll um, is going to bring W's, and so Giants loss. All right, then moving on to Week Five at Miami, we've already chosen this as a Miami victory. Yeah, I'd have to oh. agree. Two is Hello. just going to run all over them. What about Buffalo the following week? We've already chosen this as a loss as well. Uh, wow, are the Giants really going to start off 0 oh, and 5. I don't know. Let's go, Buffalo. No, 1, one no, and 5. 1 and 5. One and five. Uh, I've got them at 2 and 4, personally. Damn, so. they really have a tough schedule in the beginning. That's why you got to pick them. That's why you got to pick them at Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> you got to pick I, Seattle to win a game. That's fair. So lose, okay. Lose to them. <laughs> uh, I got to yeah, go with the L here, too. So then uh, the Giants host Washington. Your boy Sammy Howell coming in. Uh, I think I'll take the forty mil quarterback here. Actually, yeah. Definition as so. a get get right game. Yeah, give me give me New York Giants here. Yeah, absolutely. They they got to come off something, and Washington's the team to do it against. Then they uh, host immediately after that the New York Jets. We everyone seems to be high on the Jets. Truman and I are kind of cautiously optimistic on where the Jets will be. We've both chosen this as a Jets win. I actually think the Giants will win that one. Because if anything, like, there's such a rivalry between those, like, two New York teams. Uh I don't know how the hell they're not in the same division. New Jersey teams. Yeah. Huh? They're both New Jersey teams. I mean. Yeah, they're both New Jersey. (laughs) They're they're the stadiums in New Jersey. (laughs) But they are quite literally the New York Jets and the New York Jets. (laughs) But, yeah, I got to give the uh, Giants a win there. I think they're going to come off some a good dub. Sure. Then one of the weirdest matchups of the entire year is the New York Giants visiting the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, that is weird. Yeah, I, I got to give this one to the Giants, man. I think the Raiders are just going to be so bad. I also think the Raiders will be bad. I think there's even a shot that this game, if they lose this game, this could be Mike McDaniel. Or, uh, whoa, no, Josh McDaniel's job. Yeah, I don't think it's it could be on the line in this game, and they but lose. But you are it, choosing a Giants he, win. Like, he could get fired. Yes, I'm choosing a Giants win, and this could be the kiss of death for Josh McDaniels. Who is uh, Vegas's new quarterback? Jimmy G. Oh, do they? Who's their wide receiver one? Because they don't have Devontae Adams. Devontae, Devontae Adams. Adams still there? But don't forget their backup, yeah. Marcus Mariota. And they got Josh Jacobs. Still. Oh no, wait, I mean Mar- that's still a good no. team. Yeah, Marcus, Marcus is, is Marcus is actually backing up the Eagles now. Marcus yep. is Mariota. Yeah. That's your new backup. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I thought it was interesting. The quarterback show. I don't know if you watched it yet. Yeah. But, oh yeah. Um, they didn't really show a lot of Marcus Mariota's life. Just he had a rough season. Yeah, you know, it's kind of hard to, and they just lose all the time, and then get benched halfway through the season. I guess. But, and I wish yeah, the best was, of luck. Yeah. Hope, yeah. He got he, benched. He got knee surgery, and then they were like, "Cool, never see you again, Marcus." <laughs> yep, <laughs> Until the it's finale, like, where we announced you. he went to the Eagles. <laughs> So I think he'll serve as a pretty good backup. Definitely better than Gardner Minshew. But yeah, I think I got to go with the Giants win though over Las Vegas. 
Yeah, so basically uh, the Eagles went from one Pac-12 player of the year to another Pac-12 player of the year. Hey, man. One of them was... Uh, was he actually Pac-12? Yeah. Uh, uh, Gardner Minshew is the best Washington State player to ever go to that school. Is that where he went to school? I know his coach died He threw for like 5,000 yards at Wazoo. Oh, wow. In a single season. I mean, okay. big so, fish in a small pond now. <laughs> Pac-12, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, so then the following week, uh, to continue their uh, road trip, Giants visit Dallas. We've already picked that game as a Dallas win. Then uh, the Giants go on the road a third time to the Commanders. I'm going to have to give this one to the Commanders. Um, I, well, I just don't think Dow- uh, the Giants are that good, and the Commanders are going to need some wins on their schedule. I have to disagree. I think Washington uh, is going to just be a horrible team. They got brand new owners that probably know nothing about football. They're coming off losing Dan Snyder. They're yeah, noted ball knower Dan Snyder. <laughs> yeah, I mean he made billions of dollars. So shout out to him. Yeah, for fucking exploiting cheerleaders. Yeah. <laughs> God, super, hey. super gross, super disgusting. Yeah, give me, give me just for that. Give me Washington uh, losing this game still. <laughs> yeah, <it's just> the <laughs> ghost of Dan Snyder haunts them just a little bit more. Oh. All right, then the Giants uh, come back home finally to host New England. Truman said this was a Giants win. I said this was a Giants loss. Josh, what say you? I got the Giants on quite the win streak right now, and I think they're going to keep it going into the bye week. So, because right. New England just doesn't scream good, especially because you don't know if Zappy's going to start or Mac Jones. So you're saying the the Giants start one and five, and then go on a five game win streak? You know, sorry, that's a six game win streak into the bye. <laughs> you know, they get some miracles. I guess uh, now that I'm looking at the Dallas game, I maybe should have. Change that one, but we'll, <laughs> we'll stick with it. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. So following oh the bi- following the bye week, uh, the Giants host the amazing team that will be the Green Bay Packers this year. I've already seen Packers fans talking about uh, Jordan Love being Rogers 2.0 on Yo. Twitter. I saw a post today. You guys no, they com- no. Yeah, they compared oh a Jordan Love God. throw to our Aaron Rodgers throw and said Absolutely it's basically not. the same thing. It's happening. Yeah. It's happening. We've already chosen this as a, as a Giants loss, actually. I will Why say... We both I, picked this as a Giants loss. That's the Giants crazy. are going to be bad. The I will say, I did see... When the Eagles were playing them last year, I think Jordan Love came in, and they were throwing to Watson, and they actually scored quite a bit. So, like, if they have a good connection, that's going to be great, but I just don't think they can beat um, the Giants. Not with Jordan Love. I don't think that's ridiculous. Then the Giants go on the road to New Orleans. I think New Orleans is actually going to be a sneaky all right team. So I'm going to choose New Orleans to win this one. I think I'm going to pick New Orleans as well here. I don't even know who New Orleans quarterback is. Come on, dude. Derek Derek Carr. Derek Derek Carr. Carr. You got Jamal Williams there now too. Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and I'll take New Orleans getting a W on that I don't, one. I, I got to end that seven game win streak too because right. that's gonna that's <laughs> absurd. I think that I think that Derek Carr is really underrated. He had the misfortune of playing against Patrick Mahomes uh, for a long time and Philip Rivers, uh, two guys who just had uh, the Raiders number for a while. That's fair. Mm-hmm. And, you know, also played against Peyton Manning, and then. Obviously whooped up on Denver after that. Oh my God! Yeah, he's played against greats and only greats in yep. that division. Yeah, uh, Derek Carr uh, was at one point up for the MVP. Unfortunately, that year he did uh, was the year he broke his thumb. Broke his leg. Broke his leg. Yeah. No, he broke his leg. He broke his leg that year. Oh, that's right. And then the following year, he yeah. was on a good pace and then broke his thumb. Yeah. Poor dude just can't catch a break. Hopefully he can catch a break in the easiest division in football, the NFC South this year. In the big easy itself. Exactly. Yeah, hopefully so. We'll see. Then the Giants visit Philadelphia. Philadelphia is just better. Yeah. Give me Philly here. Uh oh. Yeah, I, I did it backwards, yeah. Yeah, uh, Philadelphia all the way there. We beat him by like forty points two times at the end of the season. Like yeah, Come I, on. Just, I, I don't think it's going to be close. It's just, it's then the uh, Did you guys Giants. play them in the playoffs? It was a little close, wasn't it? 
in the playoffs? No, Am we destroyed them. We decimated them in the playoffs. Did you guys play them in the playoffs? Yeah, we because they got yeah. to the second round. We took them as the beat. lowest seed. Yeah, that's um, right. I thought we were going to play just our rivals because I was hoping, you know, Cowboys would win so we could send them home. But I'm happy with uh, sending Brock Purdy home, <laughs> too. So Hey, we like that, too. Uh, as yeah, Brock Purdy. <laughs> You mean Mr. Really Irrelevant. You mean the local really janitor played that played quarterback that in that game? Hey, I, yeah, you, you had a hell of a run. Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, what's his name? Joan Johnson. Josh Johnson. Is it, is it Josh Johnson? Who's Joan Johnson? Joan Johnson was the guy for the Rams, I think. Uh, okay. One or the um, other. One of them plays for the 49ers and one of them plays Josh for the Rams. Johnson is play, Josh Johnson plays for the Niners. Okay. Well, he also, I mean, he wasn't doing horrible. And then he got hurt. <laughs> he got hurt. Which uh, he didn't. I don't think he actually got hurt. I think he just got hit, and the NFL was like, "We need to look at this guy." Which is a weird timing because I didn't notice a big hit until like they showed the replays, and I was like, "Yeah, I could see." He like, did look kind of concussed. He got up slow. Yeah, but they don't do that for Tua though. So <laughs> Tua's coaches are bad. Tua's coaches are. Oh bad. wow, thirty-eight to seven. Oh yeah, I did miss that. Oh yeah, we decimated them. Um, but who was the leading passer in that game? I don't care. The W's a W. <laughs> it was Daniel Jones. I, I was actually, actually, I, I think they were showing me the wrong thing, and I, uh, I think he was just the leading passer for the Giants in that game. So dude, never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna need to know how much, how many yards did Jalen Hurts actually have that game? Because I think like he had, they took him out of the game. Mm, I think he didn't have many points. Uh, he didn't have many more yards. Jalen Hurts passed for 154. Daniel Jones passed for 135. So oh, wow. it wasn't that's off by much, I will say. But, hey, that's the true MVP. And Jalen dude. Hurts played the whole game, so I don't. Dude, throwing for 150 awesome. yards in the playoffs, that's MVP, I think. Yeah, I say nobody else threw a pass for the Eagles, so I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, weird... moving on the uh, to their third to last game of the year. The Giants host the Rams. Truman and I have already chosen this as a Giants win. Yep. Yeah, I don't even know who uh, the Rams wide receiver one is right now. Is it still Van Cooper Jefferson? Cup. Oh, God. Cooper oh, Cup's yeah, going to be Cooper coming Cup. back. Is Allen Robinson still there, too? I don't think Allen is. Uh, I thought he sure went to. One, I thought he was on the Bears or something. No, he spent He was the year. on the Bears, but they saved he, him. And then he, went, he had a he, terrible year last year. Yeah, he went to yeah. the Rams and didn't do anything. Oh, okay. It was like, finally, Allen Robinson's been saved. And then he just was awful last year. Yeah, but think, had, you know, scrub janitors throwing to him because Matthew Stafford was hurt for most of it. That's true. All right, you know what? I'll give the Giants a W there. All righty. Then uh, second to last game of the year. Well, actually, last game of the year. <laughs> they host Philadelphia. And I think we all know where this is going. There's, you know, there's potential that Philadelphia has already secured the first seed, and they could win it based off that. But I don't think our second team would lose against the <laughs> New York Giants. How are you going here? Uh, I'm gonna take. I'm I'm actually gonna take the Giants here because I do believe that Philadelphia will be resting their starters, <laughs> and I think they might lose. All right, to the Giants. so I am uh, apparently historically low. On the Giants, I'm at. I've given them a six and eleven season. Then Jeez. I'm. Uh, Truman's got them at eight and nine. Josh has got them at nine and eight. And together we have them at eight and nine. So now continuing on to the the games that we've all been looking for, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. We've picked a lot of these games already. Actually, the majority, but that's what we're here for, Josh. So. Ooh. Week one, Philadelphia on the road at New England. We've given this a Philly win already. I agree. It is Tom Brady's retirement game. Um, and this is when I really wanted to talk about Juju because I 100% think that there will be a brawl this game and suspensions will be followed. A brawl. I think no, that they will fight. No. I, I'm hoping for it. I want to bring some. I just you know don't want us to get suspended. You know, suspend that <laughs> this guy. This isn't hockey. There will be a little bit of shoving, but I don't – there will probably be, like, a play where you, they're shoving a little bit, but there's no way anybody's throwing a punch with Juju. I just want to see one punch thrown. <laughs> this way. So, we'll see. One punch, man. Yes. <laughs> All right. Then week two, uh, Philadelphia hosts the uh, Vikings, which I think should be a uh, – this is a primetime game, right? It is. 
Uh, we've already yep. given this Philadelphia, but I think this could go either way. Uh, but I do think Philadelphia has a slight edge as of right now. So they got the edge because Kirk Cousins is horrible. Is horrible. He's horrible in uh, primetime games. But the one thing you got to think about is the Eagles have four days to get ready for this second game. That's true. So that's true. Uh, I am going to put it down as a loss. Um, I think it'll be a close one. Uh, and I think. Well, what it, do you mean four days? They have they have a full week. No. No, it's Thursday. Thursday night. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, that's the wrong date. Ah, uh, you bastard. It. Yeah, they they definitely got sorry. like it's a Thursday and it's like a Sunday late game. I think. Maybe no, it's like a Sunday four o'clock game on New England, and then it's late Thursday. It so, yeah. so you're giving this as a loss. He's got the he's got the times mis- memorized. Hot damn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm gonna have to give that a loss in the Eagles, and it's just gonna be one of those shitty losses that we're gonna have this season. And we're just gonna have to wear it proudly. Um, but that's what happens. I, I'm kind of blown away that they would schedule a game that close back to back, and like Minnesota is not a team that I really want to mess with. Their defense is ass, but sure. We'll see. So next week they go on the road to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is gonna be shit. I'm giving this a Philadelphia win. They got Baker this, Mayfield. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, come on. This is a, this is a Philly dub. It, it's a little weird. It's six fifteen on a Monday night game. Six fifteen is, is that Central Time? That's Central Time six fifteen. But even that's when so it's weird. Eastern Time Monday night games, they've still always started at seven fifteen. Yeah, so I'm wondering what's going on. It's also not on ESPN or ESPN Plus. It's only on ABC. What, what's going on with that game? Conference huh. realignment. That's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Is because uh, Amazon owns Thursday night <laughs> games now. So yeah, yeah, but but this is. I mean, I mean, you know, ABC is owned by ESPN. So or I think. ESPN's owns, you know, Disney owns them all. Whatever, they're all under yeah, the whatever. Disney conglomerate. They're all, they're all, all under, under the, the mouse. mouse but. Yeah. And then Disney's yeah. owned by some bigger company. I think Blackstone or Black. Something. Yeah, something like that. I forget. Uh, what it's they called. Blackstone owns like every company. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least it's has literally a pretty controlling shareholder of it. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure Blackstone literally owns like 50 percent of companies in the United States. Yeah, but it's not a monopoly, Josh, because they're not all in the same <laughs> sector. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, give me that dub. Tampa Bay, I, Jalen Hurts will go out there, score three or four touchdowns in the first half, and then he probably won't even touch the second half of the ball. He's going to grab his nuts right in front of Baker Mayfield. <laughs> he probably will. <laughs> All right, then moving on to week four. Somehow we haven't chosen this game yet. <laughs> it's uh, Philadelphia hosting Washington. Philadelphia is just the better team. I hate to give Philly another win, but got to. Washington's, Washington's terrible. Give me Philly. Yeah, no. Sam Howell is not him. So then Philadelphia goes on the road to the Rams. Truman and I have already chosen this as a Philadelphia win. Yeah, no, that's that's not even going to be a game. See, the beginning of this season is so easy for us. Yes, it, it is. It really is. Yeah, so then, that's, a, that's uh, a nice beginning for you. Then the Eagles go on the road to the Jets. I think this is going to be a closer game, but I still think that Philadelphia has the edge. Yeah, I don't think that's, uh, the Jets have the defense to stop. They don't have anyone up front that's big, in my opinion. That defensive Quentin line Williams? needs work. Uh, Quentin Williams. Becton, or whatever the hell his name is. I don't even know who Becton is. Uh, Becton, Becta, Truman, help me out here. Uh, nope, I don't know who you're talking about. Sorry. Uh, who's I'm, Williams? All, I, all I can think about is Quentin Williams on the New York I guess, yeah, I guess they got one big guy, but, you know, you got Jason Kelsey, got, Lane got Johnson. You got a bunch of good guys out there. So, uh, Is this Kelsey's final year? Is this it? Dude, I don't know. I thought last year was going to be it. If I think if Kelsey would have won that Super Bowl, he probably oh, yeah. would have retired. I also think if he yeah. wouldn't have made the Super Bowl, he would have retired. But I think making the Super Bowl makes him think that he's got to go again. I think, and in, I think yeah, it's I think also, also the fact more. that they got this new play call style where they just run it, and he's the center of attention. Really, yeah. I mean, that play starts with him, and he's it's so essential to it. So yeah, yeah. He, I mean, you know, he's part of the ninety-two percenters. He's part of the 92 percenters. So am I. 92 percenter right here. Yeah. I mean, if I was Jason Kelsey and you get to do what you want to do, which is, you know, be a tough physical lineman. Fucking hit people. Yeah. That's what he wants to do. And podcast during the week. (laughs) Podcast during the week. That's right. Yeah. So uh, beat the shit out of nerds and (laughs) podcast. That's all I got. Then Philadelphia hosts Miami the following week. I I think this is another Philadelphia win. 
Yep, I agree. I think Miami just won't have it in them. They'll, Joe's probably going to have a concussion by then. So, we'll, <laughs> so we'll, Jim I, and I have... I think we of... made the same joke. The A's to East, though. I think we said the same thing. I will say, I wish... If this game was in Miami, I would maybe give it to Miami. But, man, it's good for Philadelphia that this is in Philly. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Truman and I have the Eagles ranked 7-0, and blazing hot. Josh has them at a single loss against the Vikings. But going into week eight here at Washington. Uh, kind of a trappy little game here, Josh. I don't know. The Washington, they pissed me off. So, we shouldn't lose that game. We shouldn't have lost the game against them last year either. I would oh, say, didn't you lose to him last year? We God, did. That'd be it funny was if you guys did that again, huh? Ah, uh, if dude Taylor Heineke pissed me off that <laughs> game when he like went ahead and went down, or he got hit or whatever because he kneeled when about to get a oh, sack yeah. with like twenty seconds left because he's just a bitch in my opinion, <laughs> and he gets a yep. roughing the passer call like that's absurd. That's one of those yeah. ones, man. Dude, it's it's just dumb. The man dove like ten seconds before, so easy win. Fuck Sam How. <laughs> Truman? Uh, yeah, g- give it to Washington. Because I'm Washington. really going to enjoy the narrative. Sorry, no, oh. sorry, Philly. Sorry, I mean Philly. I mean Philly. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Oh, okay. Because I'm going to enjoy the narrative that's about to happen here. All right, so then we all have them winning at Dallas. Truman and I have a crisp 9-0 and start for the Eagles. Josh had an 8-1 entering the bye. And then they go on the road to Kansas City. A place where the Eagles have not historically played well over the last 10 years. We've only played you guys twice. That's two losses, though. Only one of those went, and actually, you played us three times. You did beat us in the preseason in 2015. I don't count preseason. I, I remember that because I was there. It was really annoying. You oh, won, yeah. You won on the last throw of the game. <laughs> All right. Yep. Wait, who, who threw the ball? Was oh, it like. Fuck, I don't remember who the quarterback was. I'm trying to think of like a backup 2015. I, it was Jer- not I believe a, it was not Jeremy Mack. I believe it was. No, wait. It wouldn't have been anybody I know because it was no, the fourth quarter no, of a preseason game. Wait. Right. Wait. What year is it? 2015 or 2014? Trying to think of third string. Wasn't 2015. Maybe 2014 or 2013 2014. then? 2014. 2015. I'm pretty sure Chip Kelly I was, there. was our it coach. Was, it was 2013, baby. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, it wasn't 2015. Oh, it fuck. Wasn't it was, wait. No. It was Matt Castle that was the starter. So fuck, oh my god! So that? oh my god, dude! Then it was 2012, maybe 2009, maybe. Jesus, how do you get 2012 no. mixed up with 2009? Because it was shitty. I wasn't watching. The, I wasn't. How old were wa- you? <sighs> you had to be ten years old. Yeah, you, shit sucked. You were in high school in, by <laughs> 2015. Yeah, no, I was young. It was way younger than that. Uh, younger. I'm still looking for... 2010, maybe? <laughs> 2010 <laughs> is the answer, yes. 2010, hey! Friday, August 27th of 2010. The Eagles won on... Uh, let's see. Well, Kevin Cole was the starter. Great, there's no box score information. God damn it, I'm going to have to Google the fucking <laughs> box score. Yeah, I, I do remember Kevin Cobb, though. You Cole do. or Cobb, Eagles. something, yeah. Well, I, all never I remember started, is I that, think. so where we where we were seated was my dad had season tickets somehow because mm. they were cheap. And there was a dude a couple well, rows sucked. in front of us no. to the left. And all he would do all game was, come on, Castle! <laughs> and he would just yell at Matt Castle the whole game. And it was just Charles fumbled game? in this no, game. just the full year. Oh, wow. So, like, even in preseason. Like, it was so unenjoyable to yeah, go. that doesn't that, sound fun. Oh, that, dude. This is even funnier. Oh, my God. Owen, the quarterback who threw that pass is none other than the offensive coordinator for the New York Giants right now, Mike Kafka. He Ooh. threw the pass? <laughs> he was the one that threw that pass. Yes. <laughs> Wow. That's Kansas funny. City quarterback coach turned offensive coordinator for the Giants, Mike Kafka. Well, I, I watched him throw a touchdown. It was a dot to the, the, the end zone left corner. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it got him a, a, a job with coaching with Andy Reid eventually, so I can't, you know, can't complain. Yeah, it was really annoying to watch that. Uh, so I remember because there was like no Eagles fans, and I will never forget this. This, this yeah. Eagles fan was standing in front of us. He's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And we're like, dude, what is preseason? He's like, I've never seen the Eagles win. 
Like, oh, damn. Because so he, he had gone to X number of games. Like, he's a Kansas City guy. He was an Eagles fan. But he had never attended a game in oh, person. He had never seen them win. Where the Eagles had so won. So he went to a preseason game. That's depressing. Yeah, he was, like, needs to buy he was like freaking out. Tickets. There were, like, no Eagles fans in the whole stadium. He was, like, one of, like, he was the only guy in our section that was an Eagles fan. He was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so people were yelling at him to sit down. He's like, guys, I've never seen them win before. Like, come on, let me have it. I will say, every Eagles game I've been to, I haven't seen them lose. Well, you're about to see them lose this year because they're losing to the Chiefs, buddy. No, I think they're going to win, and I'm going to watch it in the second row <laughs> on the visitor's side because I'm too scared to sit on the home side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chiefs. Just Chiefs W. This will be uh, this will be probably the most hyped game of the year. I think oh, both yeah. teams could be entering at what the Eagles will be, what, 9-0, and right? We've got them at 9-0 and going into this game. Uh, Four, I five, have six, Eagles. seven, eight, nine. Yeah, <laughs> nine and zero. Oh. Yeah, he already got fifteen wins for the Eagles. I have uh, the Eagles winning all but two games this year. Yeah, that's why yeah. I, I've got it. I think just for sanity's sake, I think they have to lose to the Chiefs here to even it out. Yeah, I'm obviously, not the I'm going to have to pick the Chiefs as going Josh. fifteen and two. Yeah, or sixteen and one, but. Yeah, I've got to pick. I've got to pick them. Oh, I already messed game. up. <laughs> We've chosen all these games already. I messed up. Oh, oh. So you guys got the Eagles beating Buffalo both times. Yeah, but anyway, after going on the road to a tough Super Bowl rematch in Kansas City, the Eagles come home to host Buffalo. We've Truman and I have already given this to uh, Philly. See, this is where I think we lose. I think Josh Allen really gets us there. Um, I mean, you've already got well, okay, but walk us through. You don't believe Josh Allen is a good quarterback, so I think Josh Allen is a glorified Dak Prescott because the man doesn't take care of the football and all he does is just sling it down to the best wide receiver or one of the best wide receivers. And without Stefan Diggs, Josh Allen is nothing. Now, the kid's got heart, he goes out there and he'll run and he'll take hits, and I respect that about him. But, like, if he's not winning, he looks like such a little whiny baby on the field. And I just – it pisses me off. I would give you that. He does look like a little whiny baby a lot of the time. So – and I just think, like, Stefan and Diggs and him are not going to have, like, a good year this year. They're not yeah, going to have a good connection. That, you know, they had some weird rift going on. So, I don't Step know. Step on my um, Diggs. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> then the next week, uh, this is where Philly's schedule gets really tough. Closing out the year, yeah. they host San Francisco. I've chosen this as one of my two Philadelphia losses on the year. Truman gave this one to Philadelphia as a win. Josh, what say you? I got to go win here. I mean, what, Brock Purdy's going to beat us? The man couldn't even last <laughs> one quarter last time. <laughs> like, come on. So then the week after that, we've already chosen uh, Dallas to win as a group. Truman disagreed and thought Dallas was going to win. Um, then, uh, sorry, a uh, Philadelphia win. We th- uh, Truman thought a Philadelphia was going to lose. Then the next yeah. week they're at Seattle. Um, I think that Philadelphia wins this game. Truman thinks that Philadelphia actually loses this one. Josh is a Seattle now believer. Are you, now you you're on the much? Geno Smith train when it comes to the Eagles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Let's see where this yeah. is going. Um, I don't think Seattle's got it. In a, I mean, I'm wondering who the hell their defense is like. They don't have a good defense. And I don't Josh, think you're they're... cruising towards a 15-2 season, just like me if you choose this win. I know. That's the scariest <laughs> part. I actually – well, I, we're obviously going to be Arizona. That's the next <laughs> one. So, like, yeah. All right. Then we've already w. chosen the Giants game as a cross-the-board win for Philadelphia. And then second to last game of the year, they host Arizona. I, I mean – yeah, Loss, yeah. They're, <laughs> that's such a good team, yeah. man. Yeah. Hell. Oh. So then they're uh, at New York for the last game of the year. Mm, Just yeah. from the way the schedule looks, it seems likely that actually I should switch this to a, to a Philadelphia zero. loss. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've already chosen this game. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, I, I literally put the words out there, and for some reason my brand was still like, we'll beat them with their second Yeah, <laughs> it's the worst but, part about this. <laughs> Truman I did chooses it. the I Eagles. I did it. I did it. At yeah. 13 and 4. Josh and I choose them at Wait, 15, what the and fuck? 15 and 2. No, no. Wins. No, I see. No, it's a math error. It's a math error. It's a math error. Hold on. Wait, is it? No. Oh, no, <laughs> my God. So, as a Where group, we have the Eagles at 16 and 1. 
16 what yeah, how because you add... each picked them for two <laughs> losses and on the on those weeks i both picked them as a win and you guys didn't line up your weeks oh yeah <laughs> this is so stupid they're not going 16 and one can you imagine if they go 16 and one and the one is the chiefs and then they lose to the chiefs in the super bowl again Stop. <laughs> shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> get get that energy <laughs> out of my face, man. <laughs> that would we're true. going to – it's going to be an Eagles-Bengals Super Bowl, and we're oh, going to beat no. them 36 to 30. It's our, uh, USA Today already cursed you. They picked a Bengal – they picked a Eagles-Jets Super Bowl, so it's oh over for you. Sorry, buddy. I'm sorry, Josh. I hate That's, to tell you this way. It's disgusting. <laughs> I hate to tell you that means you're not making the playoffs. Here, don't worry. Here, don't worry. I'll, I'll give yeah. you a, their pick uh, for the Super Bowl in 2022 was Chargers. Uh, wait, they didn't do it the same way that they always do it. I'm pretty sure they picked the Chargers. Did they not? Uh, no, they all picked. I believe it was. Uh, what the fuck? Super Bowl 57 winner. They picked Bengals, Green Bay, Bills, Rams, Bills, Rams, Ravens. So two Ravens, two Bills, two Rams. Famously, none of those teams made the conference championship game. <laughs> but they and did one of them make... picked Green Bay, who didn't even make. I don't so even half understand the, why they almost Green half Bay. the panel picked a team that didn't picked a team that didn't make God, the, the USA playoffs. Today is just so shit, dude. Unless they choose the Eagles, then they they know what they're doing over there. <laughs> they know what they're doing. All right. So uh, now we move on to yeah. the Washington Commanders. Truman and I only have three choices left on this entire schedule. <laughs> um, Josh has a couple more than us. Week one, uh, Washington hosts Arizona for their first win of the year. <laughs> Josh. Oh, my. Yeah, I guess they're going to win that one. <laughs> if they're going to win anything. Holy hell. Yeah. Um, I'll give them that. I just – Arizona's got to win something. I mean, I feel like I just have given Arizona L's to the entire NFC East. Yeah. But I feel like they at least got to win one. I mean, Scary Terry is going to Scary Terry somebody, right? Well, not if Sam Howell's throwing a ball. You never know. Maybe he's maybe he's the next Tom Brady, Josh. I just don't understand why he wouldn't start Jacoby Brissett. I think he proved himself more last year at Cleveland. He proved himself a couple times in Indianapolis that he's bad. <laughs> Well, Carson Wentz is still a free agent. <laughs> I, oh, poor guy. He's never going to on the board. Do you see the picture he posted where he's like, my preseason, my training camp's looking oh a little different God. this year, and he's wearing the Eagles helmet, the Colts practice jersey, and, like, his commander shorts? Yeah, no, that was dumb. I saw the uh, that, and I was like, take that fucking helmet off. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do like Carson. You know, yeah, he, he had a good season. He should have won the MVP that one year if he wouldn't. He should have. He but led he you guys to the Super Bowl. Well, he tore his ACL, and he did. He had a great season. He started us off, I think, eleven and zero or something. Yeah, crazy. right. He was the reason you guys won that Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's the reason we got there. He wasn't the reason we won right. it. So, yeah. Because yeah. that's big yeah. dick, Nick, baby. Come on now. Right. But he's got a, he's got a nice shiny Super Bowl ring to show for it. He does. He does have a Super Bowl ring. Um, but I know. But that not as many as Chad Hall, Hall of Fame? Question mark. Hall of Famer. I'm just kidding. Get out of here. He's not, he Nick have, Foles deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He doesn't have as many rings as All Chad right. Henney, though. Nick Foles, A, has the uh, record for most touchdowns thrown in a game. Seven against the Raiders. Fuck I forever. loved it. Stupid shit. And I wish he would have just thrown one that, more. That game got him signed to the Chiefs, by the way. Just so Is you know. it really? Yes. Yeah, that's fair. I, I noticed that he went to the Chiefs. I don't know if he played much He there. played. He started a game. And he, I believe, threw a touchdown. Hey, just like Chad Henney. He wasn't very, he wasn't great. No, well. People thought he could compete for the starting job over Alex Smith when he got traded here. Well, he could probably beat Alex Smith now. Probably All right. Beat Alex Smith now. I don't know. Oh, again, they're, ha- they're going to be having a mid off. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Smith was above mid. He was pretty good. I think Alex Smith until was pretty good he, Until before. he shattered his leg. Yeah. Until his leg was very brutally shattered. Like, that was horrible to see. Yeah. Another yeah. game that's going to be horrible to see is Washington <laughs> at Denver this year. Week uh, two. God, what an t- awful match. Uh, give me Denver, I guess. It's going to be like a 17-14 game. Uh, I, I just, will say Owen was absolutely correct that Nick Foles started one game in Kansas City and he threw one touchdown. Owen was that's correct. That's right. That's right. Evan, paying attention, clip that. 
Clip that. Clip that, buddy. I'm uh, notorious for uh, quoting almost the right stat. Ah. Oh, but yeah. being wrong. So or saying saying. or saying things that are just completely wrong. <laughs> but this time yeah. I got it right. Clip it. Clip. Yes. Um, I agree with you. Denver is probably going to win that one. So, uh, I, I just I don't know. That defense and Scary Terry, I think you could just lock him up easily with Patrick Sertain, and then you don't have an offense. So, uh, give me give me Washington here. Oh, this is a terrible They're going to win some shoot. games. We do this a lot on Don That's True where in, in our previous seasons where we pick the really bad teams as really bad. And we pick mm-hmm. the really good teams as really good, and that's not that's just not really how the NFL works. Where right. we all believe the Eagles are a great team. Yes, yeah, they go fifteen and two. Is, no, you know, we haven't seen a team go fifteen and two in like three years, right? But even if they are one of the best teams, but Washington is a terrible team, but they're still probably gonna win five games. Yeah, five or six, maybe seven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just for no reason, even yeah. though they're bad. Well, all know they're bad. Just remember that they're one of the worst. Four. Just remember that one of the worst Jaguars teams in memory uh, beat the Bills nine to six. Yeah, it wasn't the worst Jaguars team, but it was not a good when Josh team. Allen dommy mommy Josh Allen. Oh, I remember sure. that. Yeah, Josh they also Allen. lost. Was to... it, and the Chiefs needed that. That was to get the Chiefs yeah, up, back awesome. up to the I number one that. seed. Yeah, didn't the Dolphins so, also <laughs> lose? Uh, no, the Dolphins beat him in the playoffs last year, right? No, yeah. the Dolphins should have beat well. them in the playoffs. Oh, they, they didn't. didn't. Yeah, but Skylar, Skylar Thompson had the least amount of help any quarterback has ever had. All, he was a third stringer, and all of his wide receivers kept dropping touchdowns. Yeah, he played his best game of the year in the playoffs, and they all fucking let him down. Which was insane. That's anyway, it. another insane score line. Skylar Thompson, K-State, K-State legend. Uh, oh, no wonder you guys are. Just, I didn't know if you guys, if you knew this, K State was a uh, champion of the third best football conference in America now. So I just didn't know if you, you knew say that, that the, the third best. Yeah, arguably the, third the, best. Second the power best. three. They're wow. part of the power three. Arguably, arguably the second best because the best Big Twelve team uh, beat the best uh, Big Ten team. Mm. That's wow. That's crazy. I, I'm so glad I learned that. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, well the second best Big Twelve team. Sorry, the second best Big Twelve team beat. The best, the best Big, uh, Ten Big Ten team. Because the best Big 12 team was the Kansas State Wildcats, of course. That's right. Okay. Did you guys beat KU that year or did you lose? Oh, we beat the shit out of KU. We beat them. We haven't lost to KU in 14 years, I believe. 14 years? Yeah, we, we dom yes. those okay. fucks. Okay. So, just yeah. not so, dom, so Josh, baby. Josh, just uh, keep track of how much shit KU fans are talking to K-State uh-huh. during football season. And then remember that when we beat them by 20 plus again. I mean, hell, I'll go to the game, you know. But Kansas they'll State say teams. that it's the special teams, anyways. Oh, so they're like the Green Bay Packers of the college football. Oh, no, yeah. So K State. Exactly, yeah. So the problem that the Kansas Jayhawks face is that K State has historically the best special teams of the last 40 years. Yeah. No one's had. Yeah, you might know a couple of these uh, great special teamers, such as, uh, I don't know, Darren Sproles. A great oh, example. I like Darren. Of yeah, Darren's not bad. Yeah. He's probably the shortest person to ever played the game. Yes, <laughs> but probably the greatest K State running back of all time. I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, but in a great special but teams. But yeah, guy. so K State. And he was uh, a great special teams guy for the Eagles. Has also. has double digit more non offensive touchdowns than the next uh, the next team, which is Alabama. What do, who do you guys play though? You guys don't play the Big Twelve. Teams. What do you mean? The the Big Twelve. Like Who? Texas and Oklahoma, Texas. we own Oklahoma. You know, you do not own Oklahoma. We do own Oklahoma. We do own Oklahoma. We've, we've, we've won three. We beat of the them last three of the last four times. Three of the last four. Yep. All right, I'll give you that. Yeah. Kind of like the Bengals yeah. against the Chiefs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> kind of like the Bengals yes. against the yes, Chiefs. Yes, it is. It is kind of like the Bengals against the Chiefs. It is inexplicably, for no reason at all, a worse team beats a better team and for whatever reason. Anyway, speaking about a worse team losing to a better team, Buffalo is going to beat the shit out of Washington week three. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now, that's going to be violent. Yeah. So bank. then then we've it's already bank. chosen a week four uh, Washington going on the road to Philadelphia, losing to the Philadelphia Eagles, pretty obviously. Then we have Washington hosting Chicago. I am not a Justin Fields believer, so I've given this one to Washington, and so is Truman. Uh, what say you? 
I, I agree with you. I just hate quarterbacks from Ohio State. No, they're bad. Personally, just because like anyone who has to you know the Ohio State, that just pisses me off. And I got a few buddies that are Ohio State fans, so I they don't love you guys. Any- love you, Noah. Love you, Taylor. But I fuck Ohio State. They don't man. play anybody all year. They lose their bowl game, and then their players go to the NFL and suck. Except for their say. wide receivers, of course. But their quarterbacks are yeah, pretty. Michael Michael Thomas, Garrett Wilson, yeah, both pretty good. Pretty good That's fair. Wide receivers are good. Quarterbacks bad. Anyway, yeah. Running back's game, also pretty solid. Zeke, Zeke was pretty good for a long time. Until he ate that bowl of cereal in a weird way. Then um, That was his rookie year. What do you <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> then Washington goes on the road to Atlanta, one of the only games of this slate we haven't picked yet. This is the fucking dumpster fire off, dude. Sam Howell versus Desmond Ritter. Personally, I have this one circled. I'm watching. Yeah. You know? I mean, and they got Bijan in Atlanta now. Yeah. So that that Ooh. changes things, and then Kyle Pitts this is coming back. This changes everything. So I don't know. They're gonna have a nice offensive. It might threat. be thirteen to ten instead of seven to nine, dude. <laughs> I gotta go with the the experience, Desmond Ritter. Um, I think they'll take. Fuck, that I guess one. I also have to agree with you. I mean, Washington. I think I, I'm also going to take. I think I'm also going to take Atlanta here. It feels weird, but I'm actually I taking think Washington. It, I changed my mind. I need Washington to have more than three wins this year. All right. I mean. So then we picked the next what, two games. That's why I picked them to beat Denver. Simple. Th- easy. Then we, then we picked the next two games. Washington goes on the road to the Giants and loses. Then they host Philadelphia and lose. And then November 5th, Washington is going on the road again to New England. Truman and I have already chosen this as a Washington loss. I think I just have to go W here because I got to win something. But, like, <laughs> damn. Um I do not think they win that game, though. Yeah. Like, the, the, the is... NFC East does not have have an easy schedule set up, having to play the NFC West and no. the AFC East. And it's going to, I think, to probably I, the second, probably the best of the remaining divisions in the NFC. And as you said, maybe the best division in the AFC also. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen this year, but this could be one of those years where, like, winning the, a 10 games wins you the NFC East. Because their Impossible. schedule is just so tough. Yeah, no, it's going to be a tough schedule. And the only thing is the Eagles are just like a whole different tier, in my opinion. Like, yeah, then like the Cowboys, and then there's probably two tiers between us and the Giants. And that's where I, I don't know. I definitely don't think we go 16 and one this year. I sure as hell hope we do. <laughs> yeah, but, I just feel know. like they lost a lot of guys on the defense. Isn't they did. Right? I mean, they lost. They lose a lot of their secondary. We lost Hargraves, and you know, my biggest concern right now is linebacker. We lost both of our starting linebacker, who both had the top two, like most tackles yeah. in our defense last year. And I mean, you can go ahead and use the argument: well, anyone as a linebacker is going to have the most tackles, especially Just, when you're playing against a team that scored as much as the Eagles did last year. Yeah, so I can see that argument. But Nakobe Dean right now is our like starting linebacker. And I have my concerns there. So we'll have to see. I know we just signed two more guys because that's probably the weakest part of our defense. So we're going to struggle against people who can run the ball. But the good thing is, is this league is not built around running the football anymore. Yeah. So true. So built around pushing your quarterback over the line for every QB sneak within one yard. (laughs) Works every 92% of the time works every time. (laughs) I can't believe they didn't find a way to ban that. I, uh, no, because that's it, dumb. It's what's wrong with it. There's nothing illegal about it. If I just push a guy, I don't. Well, you you shouldn't be able to. I I mean, back in the day, you used to not be able to push guys, and I think it made sense for should, like what we're seeing now. And I wouldn't be shocked if we go back. They might get away with it for one more year, but I think next year it's going to be past. It's it, if they get rid of it then it's going to be stupid because all you're doing is pushing your quarterback 1 yard. Like that like no one can push anyone. You can't your lineman, what are they going to do if your running backs right there and they just tap the running back? Oh, sorry, that's a push. You can't no, ban it. that's you can't not the, ban it's it. not the same. It, you, you can't, can't ban, ban it. it. You can ban f- three people pushing your quarterback no, as your quarterback that's... pushes into a line. You could ban that. Well, then Fucking hit him. Get to him. I don't like just do better as Juice a defense. Steroids, have yeah. the nose Juice steroids. Have be gigantic. I mean, fuck. He has to handle three guys. Just, well, four actually. Just do some trend. I mean, come on. Do some trend. <laughs> yeah. Get big. So do, do a quick cycle. Yeah. Speaking of yeah. speaking of teams that need to do trend, uh, when Washington Ooh. goes on the road to Seattle, uh, they're going to need to be beefed up on some roids. 
some energy drinks some or something. Because yep. uh, Truman and I have already chosen this as a Washington loss. It's going to be a tough game for him. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one for him, especially. I mean, you said that Washington had a good defense earlier, but I don't know that they do. I really Any don't. defense with Chase Young on it is good enough for me. But he's just one defensive end. Like, they're secondary. Aaron Donald's had a one defensive end team for a long-ass time. And the Rams went 4-12 and 12 last year. That's because they had a corpse at quarterback. Well, the, they so does Washington. So, <laughs> L, Seattle's Fair taking enough. that one. Then we've chosen the next two games as Washington losses. Coming in to, you guys to got him December third, Truman and I both chose Washington to beat Miami. Uh, remember that uh, two is probably not playing in this game. Oh my God! I don't know. I even their backup quarterback though with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. Uh, uh Mike too. Smith. Mike Smith, the backup now. The number Mike, two. Oh, Mike and, Smith. Uh, I actually Miami like him. No, do you? He's actually a pretty good backup and. Yeah, I think that's a, I think he's a solid backup. I don't think he'll ever be a starter, but I think he's a solid backup for sure. Yeah, no, I agree with that. He's a solid backup. He's, he's, a, kinda, he's a Chad he's like Henney, a Nick Matt Moore. Yeah, a, Nick Foles. Nick, a great, yeah. yeah, but uh, remember that Sam Howell's probably getting benched for whoever the hell is the backup in, in Washington at this point. Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett is the backup. Oh, God, why did I choose a win? So, I don't even know who they're Why did I choose is. a win? What were we on? What I don't we know. We were on, we were on one. Yeah, no, I'm gonna take. We were that. on the two a concussion joke. We were running That's a bit. Zero. We were <laughs> in a silly, the, silly, goofy mood. <laughs> silly mood. Then after the bye week, Washington hosts the Rams. Truman and I have already chosen as a loss for these poor Washington Commanders. <laughs> you think they're gonna lose against Ooh, the you Rams? Said it. You said it. Yes. Yes. I do. I guess they have Aaron Donald. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. Aaron Donald. It's, Matt, it's at the Rams. Stafford at home. East Coast yeah, team going west. What happened with the Rams last year? So much. Everybody like, got hurt. They had like a whole bunch of injuries. Injured, but like. They still had Baker Mayfield clutch a game for him. I actually watched that game. It was lit. Seeing Baker really? come in and, and clutch that game for him. Was that was fun. surprising. Whenever they, they bought, I think they got him like two days before or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was that. like three or four days. So he couldn't have possibly known like any of the calls. No. But it was pretty fun though. Yeah, I'd probably agree with you. That's probably going to be an L. These four commanders, man, they have a terrible lead. Tough. Season. Jesus, I only have them at three wins right now. Then they go on the road to the Jets, and Truman and I have said that's already a loss. Jesus Christ, yeah, that's a loss. <laughs> <laughs> then the last two games are hosting San Francisco and Dallas. That's a loss. <laughs> uh, I chose I chose Washington to win one because they have to win at least one of these games that, against the. That is the second against best team the in the Niners? NFC. Hey, There's no shot they win that they're game. They're going to have uh, Josh Johnson that? is going to be quarterback. They're, all of the quarterbacks are going to get injured again. Tra- you, when Trey Lance gets injured again, I mean, that man should just retire. He's going to turn into I the next it, Andrew Luck. I, don't I think, think Tra- if Christian McCaffrey can play quarterback, I think he could probably beat this Washington Commanders team. What, so. what do you think, Josh? You're choosing this as a, as a Commanders loss? No, San Francisco is dominating that game. Then we've all already chosen the last game of the year for these poor Commanders. As a loss. So, <laughs> looking at these, this poor God team. Damn. We, Truman's got the commanders at four wins. I've got them at six. Josh has got them at three. As a group, we've got them going three and 12 in contention for that first overall pick. So, all of us, obviously, have <laughs> Philadelphia. It's three and 14. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. That's like. Worse than the jet, like worse than any last ten years in the Jets or something like that's yeah. gonna that is a horrible season. Yeah, it's gonna be rough for these poor yeah. guys. Um, so Josh, now's the the segment of the show where we choose the top five players in the division, and you show us the knowledge of your division and players that we forgot about because you actually watch games in the division. Yeah, that's fair. Hey, I remembered the important defensive player this time. I did it. There's actually two, Truman. No. No, 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 there's not. No, there there's not. There is. No. There is, yeah. Mm, okay. You got your list I'm gonna together. Add him. Oh, I, I think I maybe have the other one. Uh, yes, I can go first. Okay, All go right. ahead. Here we go. All right, we'll start with my honorable mentions. I won't No honorable mentions, you coward. Nope. Nope, I've got five honorable mentions oh. just to show that I know ball. To show that I know ball. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what uh, I would say. My five honorable mentions are Jason Kelsey, Jonathan Allen, Saquon Barkley, CeeDee Lamb, and Hassan Riddick. There you go. There's my five honorable mentions. 
yeah, okay. to show that I know ball. Now we start with the number five on the list. Hold on, let me make sure I get <laughs> uh, number five on the list. Scary Terry McLaurin. Okay, mm. I like him. I'm Disagree. liking him. I, I think he's top five. I think he's a top five player in this division. I think maybe you make a case for CD Lamb over him, mm, but yeah, I, I think I, he's I, number five. Gotcha. Number four. I guess you've got to put him here, man. You got to put Dakota Prescott in here. I, oh, God. Yeah, he's still a top five player. You oh, know, he not. is he had the Josh most Allen. Josh Allen is league. him. Guy, yeah, he's still, what, where do you rank out in the NFL top, top 100? I don't think he was right? top 100. He still was in that zone. I think you, ha- I think you have to put him there. Oh, Dak Prescott was definitely the NFL top 100. He was like 54. He was ahead of Lamar Jackson. And people were like, what? Well, he is better uh, than Lamar Jackson. I disagree with that. Dak Lamar, Prescott Lamar is going to have a great number, season. Lamar B, huh? He was number 44 mm-hmm. last year. Uh, this year he is. Oh, no. No, maybe he. Oh, he has fallen out. Oh, my gosh. Wait, I'm actually shocked. He's out of the top 100. Yeah, he is actually out of the top 100. El Bozo sucks to suck. Absolutely. Absolutely. Although, wait. Hold on, wait. No, wait. Hold on. This was last year's. Oh. Wait. Oh, so no? he didn't make top 100 last year? No, this is. Hold on. I'm you're so You're blown away right now. You're you're like over there just like uh, in the twilight uh, zone. I'm in, a, I'm in a weird. Yeah, hold on. I'm in the shadow <laughs> realm. Give me a minute. I'm in the shadow <laughs> It is the NFL makes it so hard to look at the top 100 players. It also, dude, I was do. trying to just look up the Eagles' schedule and just like get oh, an yeah, image ESPN, of it. ESPN doesn't fucking want you to see that shit anymore. Yeah, they don't want Dak you to Prescott, have Dak Prescott, number 69. Number 69, right behind Jordan. Uh, ooh, M- Milata. Nice. Oh, Jordan Milata. Yeah. Jordan Milata is a hell of a player. Yeah. Yeah, number 68. In the top 100, yeah. Dak Prescott number 69. So yeah, so he's still in the top 100, and then Lamar Jackson is number 70. And it's like okay, that's a little weird, but sure. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't okay. agree with that. Uh, Dak also missed the same number of games as Lamar Jackson, and people forget about that. Uh, number three, kind of this is where I'm put AJ Brown. AJ Brown is just a just a beast of a human being, okay. just an insane monster of a person. Okay. Uh, and he absolutely faked the fuck out of uh, Trent McDuffie to catch that ball. That was annoying to, to watch. That, the that was Bowl. annoying. That was not the greatest throw ever. But A.J. Brown yes, just... Trent McDuffie in great position for it. And just AJ playing Brown the said, wide receiver instead of the ball. And it, just yeah. totally got cooked. A.J. Brown said, welcome to the league, young fella. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happens yeah. when you have AJ rookie Brown quarterbacks. That's true. Uh, number two. This is where I put old uh, pass rush Limbaugh, Michael Parsons. Okay. Yes, yeah, I already made that joke for Nick uh, for Nick Bosa, but it works here for Mike Parsons also. <laughs> Mike Parsons is number two, probably. Uh, pretty good. Uh, I mean, the best defensive player in the division, hands down. Right. Yep. Yeah, by far. So, and number one, uh, Jalen Hurts. Easy. Shocker. He's number three over uh, in the NFL. He's number one in this division. So, Truman, go, go back through your top five. Top five, scary Terry McLaurin. Number four, Dak Prescott. Number three, A.J. Brown. Number two, Micah Parsons. Number one, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, once again, Truman and I having similar lists because uh, we're going at this from the same perspective. Uh, at number five, I actually have Saquon Barkley and in with a mega amount of asterisks when healthy, <laughs> um, which, sure. is, which is rarely. But when he is healthy, he does tear up defenses. Uh, he, uh, Mr. 900,000, I call him the $900,000 man. Uh, because he was really happy to sign for 11 mil instead of 10.1. Hey, that's an extra hey, get, Go get, get your, your bag, in, buddy. <laughs> Number four, this is where I put A.J. Brown. He belongs in the top five, but I don't think he's as good as the next three players on the list. Number three, Terry McLaurin. I've, I would still take Terry McLaurin over A.J. Brown, but you'll say, Owen, A.J. Brown's got better stats. Yeah, because Terry's catching passes from janitors. Um, that's fair. Okay, continuing on, Micah Parsons, obviously – Dude's going to be, you know, top three defensive player for the next seven years. He's very incredible. A treat to watch play the game. And number one, my favorite player in the whole division, Jalen Hurts. 
Uh, I've always liked Jalen Hurts ever since I saw him uh, lose the national championship game when he was 18. Dude just never shows emotion, which I think is a very important uh, trait to have as a quarterback because you'll never, you know, he can't ever disappoint his teammates because he's never going to show them how he's feeling. And this that stone cold killer look is something that I've always enjoyed uh, seeing in him. Uh, I do enjoy him uh, randomly fumbling the ball in clutch moments in the Super Bowl. That is super cool of him to do. Big but, shout out, big shout out. Got Nick Bolton a touchdown. Fuck but, Nick Bolton. Nick Bolton was uh, a, another scoop and score away from a Super Bowl MVP. But Jalen Hurts should have should have had it. I, I call that a complete pass personally, but it's all right. <laughs> but Jalen Hurts uh, was the best player on the field in the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, can't win MVP if you don't win it. So going back through top five, Saquon, then A.J. Brown, then Scary Terry, then Micah Parsons, then Jalen Hurts. Once again, shout out to the guy, best player on the field in the Super Bowl. Truman, I don't, I don't think that's negotiable. Uh, I mean. It's not. It's not best, negotiable. Best stats. Best stats in the Super Bowl for sure. Best performance. I mean, the only thing he fucked up on was well, one fumble. Yeah, I would say not the best performance, I would say. So, I mean, if he doesn't fumble that, he wins and gets MVP, and that goes down as the greatest win in Eagles history. No, 2018 will always be the greatest win in Eagles history. Well, that is fair. We beat Tom Brady as a one seed. With trick play. Underdog. With, yeah, with trick With plays. a trick play. Yeah. We call it yeah. the Philly special. 2018, Look it up. that was one of my favorite Super Bowls yes. to watch. It was the best Super Bowl. I mean, it was the best Super Bowl ever to watch by far. Well, 2019 well, has to be okay. biased the next year, but... When you yeah. guys beat the 49ers? Yeah, yeah. coming down yeah. from really 10. really wasn't that. That's 10. Come on. Like, you didn't. Uh, in the fourth was, quarter. Everyone's like, everyone it's talks like about how left. there's like 10.7 minutes left. That's two possessions. You tell me you, you don't think it's possible to get the ball back twice with seven minutes. Against we beat the, them the, by 11. Well, I'm not talking about <laughs> that. Just the okay, most I'm just talking about coming court. back from the 10. <laughs> yeah. I get that you guys had some extra plays in there, and you want a little bit extra. Damian Williams runs to immortality. You guys, I mean, you had a hell of a game, and Patrick Mahomes is a clutch player. Um, the After he makes his mistakes in the Super Bowl, which he always does. Well, he didn't really make that many mistakes this Super Bowl. No, but he overthrew some guys. Yeah, but this was the yeah. first Super Bowl that I've seen Patrick Mahomes more. play in that he didn't make that many mistakes. But he did have his typical under two hundred yard Super Bowl. Yeah, well, which is just crazy to think about. He's not so that weird. good. So yeah, one eighty three, I oh. believe, was his stat line. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> Pat, Jalen Hurts is obviously he's going to be the number one on my list. Uh, but I'll start at five. I'll start at five. Um. At number five, I actually think... You going to put BG right here? <sighs> BG? Brandon Graham? Brandon Graham, like, if I, like, this year, I don't think he makes that list. Brandon Graham, he's obviously a veteran. Right. He's been with us for 17 years, but I don't think I can 17 years. He's been over well, not 17 years. It's <laughs> been, on, it's been, it's years. been like, maybe over 11 for sure, but it's been a hell of a, hell of a ride with him. So... I actually am going to go ahead and put Darren Waller at number five. And I understand that everyone's going to be like, uh, but he's the best tight end in that division right now. And top he's five. just been hurt for so long. He's been just hurt, but keeps like, on getting hurt. Yeah. But, and, and but so does Saquon. So, so like, does everyone in that division, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think he's top five for sure. Um, and then obviously Saquon Barkley, he's up there for me. Uh, when healthy, of course, as Owen mentioned, because when that guy went back to back seasons, lose, missing the entire season, that yeah, detrimental to the Giants. Like the Giants are not going to be good without Barkley, and that's why I'm blown away they won't pay him. But it probably is because they just spent forty million dollars on a mid the worst QB. deal. So Ever. makes sense. Next, AJ Brown, absolutely. Yep, three or four spot, I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, AJ Brown's a dog, and I, I think he's gonna. I didn't think be... he was good coming from Tennessee. Turns out Ryan Tannehill bad. Um, yeah, no, Ryan Tannehill sucks. So, I mean, when it, when you have trash thrown to you, like Scary Terry and stuff like that, you can kind of get to see what the good side. Like AJ Brown was just a dog this year, and also one of our coworkers was talking to me and said that um, 
whatchamacallit, Devontae Smith is ass. And I was like, what? Like, that is the hottest take I've ever – to me, he's an honorable mention because I think that man is the best wide receiver, too, in the league. I mean, yeah, but he's, he's a good wide receiver, uh, too. T. Higgins you... is the best wide receiver, too, in the league. Nah, T. Higgins washed. <laughs> <laughs> I think Devontae Smith is good. Devontae Smith is a dog, I don't man. think he's a great wide receiver. I think he's good. I think, I think he deserves good. an honorable mention. I think he definitely – I mean, yeah, sure. He was For sure. He was number 100 on the NFL Top 100, and yeah. I think that is a perfect place for him. Yeah, it's not bad, especially for second year in the league. Oh. Hell, hell of a time there. And so. a revival. He did not have a good first season. Well, you got to think our offense just didn't have a really good first season. Yeah, I mean, so. listen, it's, it's no slide on him, but, you know, it's, it's good for him to have climbed so many spots. You know? Yeah, that's fair. Um, number two spot, I think we all can agree, it's got to be Micah Parsons. That man is a dog. He is, he's a monster. He's insane. And I just – I wish he would come play for the Eagles. <laughs> just never come. Gonna, never gonna just come, come play for the Eagles, Micah. <laughs> And then we could just be the best fucking team. I would love it. That would be ridiculous. It would be absurd. And he, you know he wants to. You saw that interview when he saw that He's, we got Jalen Carter. He goes, damn, I want to be on that team now. We got Jalen Carter, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Josh Sweat. You got everyone on that line. Hassan Reddick, man. Oh, Yeah, the Philadelphia God. Bulldogs, dude. Yeah, Philadelphia. I'm. Hey, don't break it. Like, Don't break the process. <laughs> if you get national championship teams, you want winners – Go after the national championship team. Georgia's, a, Georgia's undefeated, man. They're, they're, they're great. You guys should have drafted Stetson Bennett then. I <laughs> absolutely not. That man Two is, of them. Two national champions. Yeah. No, that man is the old and needs dude to go. Ever, bro. That man is older than Matthew Stafford, isn't he? He's going to be the heir apparent. He's like, like the, you remember the Cowboys did this with Brandon Whedon, where Brandon Whedon was like 28 when he got drafted. And everybody mm. was kind of like, oh, I forget that that. And like, and they were like, trained him for a year, and then they put him out there, and he was dog ass. I feel like Stetson Bennett is going to get that treatment. In like two years, he's going to be starting. And it's like, he's a 28-year-old rookie, and he's going to be dog ass. Who the fuck picked him up? The Rams. Of course they did. Yeah. And he's been impressing in camp, allegedly. Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, fuck. I'm what sure I've he's in, impressing against the fours. What I've seen. Um, I will say he'll impressively make the practice squad. The number five spot for Darren Ooh, Waller, the, the close one. I just didn't want to put too many Eagles up there, but big play Slay deserves to be up there. I feel like it's kind of hard That's to fair. choose between them. I mean, he, he locks down Justin Jefferson when he play. So you can't look at him and say he's not. Yeah, he's one of the best corners in the league for sure. He is the best corner. Better than Jalen Ramsey, in my opinion. Um, and also better than sauce. Uh, sauce Gardner. Absolutely. That, man is just a rookie like he sauce Absolutely has got a lot just. more sauce is like a top three corner of the league already yeah no it's top sauce is good don't get me wrong but like it's his first year let's let's see you can do it consistently big play slay's been out there for years doing this and he's he's learned a lot and he gets to go against aj brown every day that's that's how you get good just, sauce is going up against see, repeat it, repeat best cornerback in the league feels like a Rich. I don't know about best corner in the league, but well, I mean, he's very good. Then Nate, who's the next one? Who's number one over him? Because like Jalen Ramsey, I don't think I think he's fallen off. I actually just googled best cornerback in NFL 2023, and legitimately on Bing, uh, Sauce Gardner. Literally a picture of Sauce Gardner, and the word Sauce Gardner shows up. I, I really <laughs> am not making that up. Okay, well, that's why I use Google and not Bing. <laughs> so, well, I'm just I'm just saying. It's, the fact it's that you even pulled it up and ring. PFF has it Sauce Gardner, Jalen Ramsey, and then Slay. Yeah, dog shit. PFF sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, just you already told us your number one. Huh? You already told us your number one. Oh, absolutely. It's Jalen Ramsey. So, so go back to your top five. So – Top five. Top. I got Darren Waller at a sketchy little five position. You know, that could easily be replaced by uh, Big Play Slay or C.D. Lamb, in my opinion. Sure. Um, got Saquon Barkley, when not with both knees went on healthy. The field. Yeah, went on the field. Um, at four, A.J. Brown, three. The dog, Micah Parsons. I mean, he's number two. And then Jalen Hurts, he's just such a leader. So I have to give Jalen Hurts sure. number one. And he's also just they got that mentality, you know. Sorry. Yeah, uh, you know, real I, quick, e, e, ESPN's list even more insane. Doesn't have Darius slaying the top ten. Their top ten is Charvarius Ward, 
Stephon Gilmore, Ward? Marlon Wait, he's number Humphrey. One? He's number one? J- no, this is 10 to 1. Oh, okay. Ward, uh, Charverius Ward, which is an insane thing. Charverius Ward, a great cornerback, but not a – I don't know. Top 10 is a stretch. I think He's top right 10? No, I line. think I would put him at 10. 10? I don't know if I'd put him at. Listen to the rest of this 10. Stephon Gilmore, number nine, which yeah. is. He's not that good anymore. Marlon Humphrey, number eight, also had kind of fallen off. Jalen Ramsey, number seven. Just what? crazy. Crazy to me. Jair Alexander, number six. Okay. Fine. Good. Denzel Ward, number five, which is fine. Xavier Howard, number four. It's okay. Where's Mika Fitzpatrick? Marshawn, not uh, a safety. He's not on this list. Oh, Mar- Marshawn Lattimore, number three. Okay. Lattimore's Pat Sertan, right. number number two, and then Sauce Gardner, number one. So, Wait, so everybody's no got Sauce Gardner as number one. No slay. No slay at all in the top ten. <laughs> That's absurd. That is just blasphemy <laughs> at its finest. I will say I did forget about Patrick Sertan. Um, so... Um, maybe right. I will take gonna, second best I'm, for Slay. I'm gonna read Sports Illustrated's one more time. Hold on. There's uh, no way Sauce Wallen, is the best. Trevon Diggs, James Bradbury, number eight, which feels weird. Zell Ward, number good. seven. Marshawn Lattimore, number six. Uh, Jair Alexander, number five. Darius Slay, number four. Ramsey, Sauce Gardner, and then Pat Sertan, number one. See, that list is a lot more believable, but I think Darius Slay still is top three. I don't think Sauce – like, Sauce did, – who did the Jets play last year? And you guys are going to put him on this fucking pedestal. The Jets didn't play really anyone other than the AFC East, I guess. Yeah, the AFC is a pretty good team. Pretty so, good team. But like, so you who, have to match up against Tyreek Hill and Stephon Diggs for four of your 17 games. It's pretty – it's not a great matchup. No, I mean, that's fair. Did they and Garrett those Wilson games? did they on, lose those games though? Mm. He probably uh, got cooked those uh, games. He probably got cooked uh, against those two guys, and then was just I think good against. He famously else. did not get cooked, but they still lost. Yeah, I, I, I think they just went to other people in those games. We'll oh. have to see though. Yeah, we'll have to look. We'll have to roll the tape. We'll, we'll be paying attention to him in the office, Josh. But I'm a yeah, soft gardener yeah. apologist. <laughs> no, no. Apologist. All right. Well, you know who else I'd like to apologize to? Our Patreon members for not mentioning them during this episode up until this point. Our Patreon members are, of course, people who subscribe to our Patreon at uh, Open Disaster to help us keep the lights on here at Open Disaster Productions. And they are Joe... Uh, Skyler, Aaron, Dylan, and Meltbox, who have been open in the Iron District for a while. Stop saying now open in the Iron District. They've been open in the Iron District for like five months. Go get yourself a Meltbox. Now open in the Iron District. Go get a Meltbox. Shut your ass up. I hate you. Um, So... Uh, thank you guys all for watching this episode. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Th- uh, thank you to Josh for coming in and joining us. Thanks uh, for having me, guys. Yeah, we're going to be uh, doing a lot more shit talking in the office, obviously, as the year yeah, goes on. Absolutely. But. I can't wait till I go watch those Chiefs get their ass. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll send you a live video of it whenever I watch Jalen Hurts just get pushed into the end zone for the third <laughs> or fourth time that game. <laughs> They, so follow Truman on Str- Jalen tw- Hurts for his fourth touchdown of the of the game cuts the deficit fifty six twenty eight. So go oh, follow go follow Truman on Twitter <laughs> at Steen Machine. Uh, follow me on Twitch at Steen Machine. Follow me on Twitch at Domination Seven. Follow me on Twitter at Owen Gosh Domit. And of course, follow our Patreon and our YouTube at uh, Disaster Open. I believe. No, Open Disaster no, Productions open, on open YouTube. Open Disaster Productions on both of those. Uh, go ahead and follow us on Spotify as well. Also on Apple Podcasts and wherever else you get your podcasts. Go ahead and slap. Twitter.com slash Disaster Open. Oh, that too. Go ahead and subscribe. Comment on Dude Perfect's videos about Open Disaster so that it redirects to us. Don't forget to do that. Um, yeah, watch watch the videos and then click into a Dude Perfect video. Or watch a Dude Perfect video and then click into ours. Of course, it out. you know, just uh, we need to spam out. the algorithm, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but uh, you know, I, I appreciate you guys all coming in today, Josh. Once again, thank you for hopping on. Uh, Thanks, I know man. that uh, once again, great insight. We all love when someone from inside the division comes to help us out. But thank you all, and we're going to get out of here. Peace. <laughs>